Hi, welcome to our latest edition of HDTV. We're here in Norfolk, Virginia at the Glasslight Hotel and Gallery with Patricia and David of Baskerville. We're very excited to be here and especially happy that this is sponsored by Shaw Contract Hospitality. Tell us a little bit about the history of the building and about the client because I feel like it's a it's a very interesting story. It's a conversion of an existing uh, office building. It's 110 years old. It was an office building that housed uh, the Royster Company, which is, a, of all things, a fertilizer company. It was the tallest building in Norfolk for 63 years. And the most difficult thing was to turn it into a 117-room hotel, which it didn't want to be because it yes. wasn't its original purpose. And that's where, that's where I came in as the lead architect. Almost everything you see here in the lobby in terms of the plaster work and, those, and everything else and the windows all had to stay exactly the way it was. So what we wanted to do was obviously pull people in off the street. So this back wall behind the reception desk is based on part of the process of glass blowing where wooden paddles are used to shape glass. That's the inspiration for that. And then as we move back into, we wanted to highlight the glass collection of Doug and Pat because in addition to not just the two bunnies, they have a world-class glass collection. So the entire concept is to highlight the making of glass, the forming of glass, and the different forms that glass can take when it's turned into high art. Do you have a favorite piece of art after going through this whole process? I do, it's such a hard question because every time I come, like I said, you see new things, uh, but this, Bunny in particular. I just love it. I think uh, the way it was made, the way it's all about Pat and our connection with the owner from the beginning. It was just such a great experience to work on this project. And um, the one thing that I wanted to bring up before we moved to see other art, this necklace, which is a beautiful piece, it was not part of the original sculpture, which by the way, it took seven months to make this piece. Oh, so wow. three months to cool and then to put it together. But this necklace is so awesome because uh, the, the glass artist Peter Bremers gave this to the owners uh, when they first opened the hotel. And there's, I believe, four of them. So and they change with the season, which I think is a nice little touch yeah. and a beautiful necklace. Well, should we go check out the other Let's pieces do it. in the hotel? Let's Perfect. Do it. Yeah. It was this part of the original scope of the project? No, it actually wasn't. It's a totally separate building from the old Royster building, but they didn't have room to hold all the glass that they wanted to show to Norfolk and everyone that comes into the gallery. So he bought this building, we turned it into this gallery, and now part of his collection is on the third floor and he, we have displays on the first and second floor. We have this architectural stair, obviously, is the biggest feature of the space. We tried to make the stair as sculptural as the pieces of art. They have from tiny little pieces of glass to these massive bunnies or the shahulis. So it was, um, yeah, very interesting and fun so to do it. Some pieces in this tall ceiling look better in the daylight. So there's, there's huge daylight in the front of this. In the second floor, we painted it all out black. So it would have a totally different feel. So certain pieces look better against white and daylight and certain pieces look better against a black background. It's amazing the different, the different means and methods and the play of light up here is pretty special. What were some of the most surprising things that they found or one of the most surprising things? Well, the coolest thing we found, uh, and we just walked past that room, we call it the skylight room because it's a double height space, but it was covered in plywood. And when they took the plywood off, it was the original skylight that let light in from the second floor down into the lobby. Oh, wow. So we restored the whole thing using historic photographs. That was super amazing to find that. Yeah. Was it a challenge to carve 117 guest rooms um, into the building since it wasn't meant to be a hospitality space? I'll say that it was challenging. Yeah. Um, we, where hallways existed, we had to keep them, so which dictated where the corridor was. Now you go into 117 rooms and they're all, they're all different. different. Okay. Well, should we go see them? The concept for the design for the guest rooms was to be a glass artist um, studio. So it's like, a, they're all different. We wanted to create an area to sleep, an area to work, an area to be like, art, you know, uh, creative. Uh, so there's a lot of different little spaces in the room where that could happen. It was a lot of fun designing each room um, to make that happen. The art is different in every room and it was all inspired by um, the glass chips. Um, the color chips, is when we went to do the workshop, the color that they add to the art, to the glass blowing, it's just so vibrant. And so that was the inspiration for that. So we have around three or four colorways and some of the suites will have all three colors in this one. Just 
gets to be the great one. So love it. Yeah. And I see the exposed brick that you found along the way. Right. We found that in a lot of rooms as we as we finished out the rooms, we found 110 year old brick. So we thought, okay, why would we sheetrock over it? Let's leave it all open. We tried to leave as many beams as we could also. So it just adds to the character. And I know a big part of the design was the carpet. And we yes. have Amy from Shaw Contract Hospitality to help us talk a little bit more about the collaboration. We wanted to do a large scale, some movement. We didn't want to see the repeat of the carpet. Also, because of the Marriott standards, we did not want to do the entire room to be all carpet. So it needed to look like an area rug. There were some challenges with there being so many different room sizes. So I think the team worked so effortlessly together to make sure that every room looked unique and different. And I think that was a really good effort between design and also the estimating department. So what was the inspiration behind the pattern? The inspiration for the carpet uh, was the uh, glass artists do sketches before they produce the glass art. So one of them was the Shahuli. There's this image I have of Shahuli that he has a broom and spraying uh, paint and there's a big swirls of color and movement. And that's what we wanted the carpet to look like. Obviously not as much color because we wanted the art and some other things in the room to pop. Yeah. And this is what uh, Shaw and us developed together. Yeah, it was very important for us to bring your vision to life. So I think as we started with the project, we started with one construction, but as we moved through the process and tried to reach your vision, we moved to a different one. So we ended up with this two color color point, which I think really got the definition and the lines that you were looking for. We worked closely with the, the team to develop a pattern that was large enough and that would fit and work into all the different room spaces. So I think that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, but yet it does make everything look unique and feel like a rug. Yes, you definitely don't see when it seems together. Right. I, to this day, I still ask if it's an area rug or if it's a carpet pattern. Well, thank you so much for giving us this amazing tour of your beautiful property and um, sharing some insight to this uh, really great collaboration. It's always so fun to get to see it in person. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us, it's amazing. So should we go have a drink with the bunny at the bar? Let's we should. Wood. All right, let's go. <laughs>